In our previous video, I was um, telling you about uh, ways how to connect to your device. So, a little reminder, so we have a command line, be it uh, Telnet or SSH. We have a uh, web interface, we have uh, Winbox, and we have uh, smartphone uh, applications. Also, we have API and TR069, and there could be some that I have forgotten at the moment. Anyway, uh, uh, let's look at Winbox, but uh, the same applies to WebFig as well. Um, when you first connect to a brand new device, what you will see is um, a window that will come up and it's called uh, Quick Set. So Quick Set is um, basically, it's like a dashboard that combines the most uh, popular settings uh, that people use when they just connect to the device for the first time. So um, it, it might not be what you need, it might not be um, needed at all for you. If you're an advanced user, what I suggest is you just close it and forget about it forever. And then you can go to the left side menu and uh, configure each aspect of your uh, router from there. Because uh, QuickSet, like I said, is basically a combination of most popular settings. But what can be misunderstood is that you don't always know what's happening behind the scenes when you set up uh, things uh, here. So for example, um, you see network name for two gigahertz and five gigahertz here, yeah? So when I, when I change these, what will actually happen is in the Wi-Fi uh, settings, uh, the SSID will be uh, changed for both of these two interfaces. But uh, what you have to keep in mind is that um, if you do s set up things here, it's perfectly fine to move on to the advanced menus and change something there as well. But I don't recommend going back and forth between uh, quick set and the advanced menus because uh, if you change something outside of quick set, quick set might not know about that and something could kind of break. Uh, there could be some conflicts. So my personal suggestion is to either you use only quick set, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I use quick set personally all the time. Uh, because mostly all I need to set up is a network name, change the password, and maybe change the PIN of my uh, LTE SIM, SIM card. But uh, even, even port mapping is here, what you advanced users know is just a shortcut to the uh, source NAT and destination NAT. So it's completely fine to just keep using Winbox and close it and forget about it. But if you plan to use the advanced menus as well, then, well, you can start with QuickSet, move on to advanced menus, and then never go back to QuickSet. That's the recommended way. Simply to avoid any conflict of uh, configuration. What can you do in QuickSet? So let's see, let's maybe go over a few of these settings. Uh, so this uh, here, this is my chateau. Um, I just reset it to defaults, put in a SIM card. This is what you get when you connect. So here you can provide the pin. Uh, I don't know the pin actually, it's somewhere, but you can provide the pin here, the APN of the uh, operator, and then you can set up if you have an external antenna or not. Uh, you can also update the LTE firmware and you can see some basic uh, information about the signal. Here's the IP address that I will get when I, once I provide the correct pin, I guess. Then uh, firewall router, this is a checkbox that will uh, put in place uh, the standard firewall rules. You can see them here in the firewall rules menu. These rules are very important. Don't disable them. Don't remove them unless you are 100% sure what you're doing. Um, in, in any normal router, you should always have these rules in place and then add, or add more rules, never remove rules. Uh, so this checkbox, better leave it alone, it should be checked. Uh, Mac server, Mac Winbox, this is for uh, connecting to the router with the uh, Mac address in case uh, something goes wrong with your IP configuration. And discovery is that uh, Winbox can indeed find the router when it's uh, scanning for nearby devices. Then you have some basic settings like IP address, Netmask, if you want to automatic IP addresses uh, for your network, NAT, 
UPnP is required for all kinds of games. And uh, you can set up support forwarding rules for your Minecraft server or whatever. And here we have VPN access. This is a very interesting checkbo checkbox here. Let's say you just uh, take this router, uh, put it in your house, and then you go to your office and you need to do something in your home network. For example, you want to um, connect to your home file server or whatever, NAS. Uh, if you check this uh, box here and set up some kind of password, so this will actually enable a um, IPsec uh, VPN service on your device. And then all you need to do is connect from your device, from your uh, phone or your work computer or whatever other device you have, you can then use uh, that device to connect to this address that is here. This is a address that is generated from your router serial number. And this is a domain belonging to Microtik. And we give you some quick DNS address uh, to connect to. So you don't have to worry about changing IP addresses. Um, use this address and this username and this password in the L2TP IPsec uh, settings. And you can then connect to your home router. And this way, you don't have to open up uh, your firewall or open up any kind of uh, Winbox port to the internet because that's very dangerous and never do that. So always use VPN, and this is the fastest way to set up a VPN server in your uh, home router. Simply check this box, and it's a very secure uh, L2TP IPsec service, and uh, use that. So what do you have then? We have uh, check for updates. Um, this is simply a shortcut to upgrading your router. As you can see here, I'm running 7.2 RC4, which is quite old at the moment, but I just pull this router from my shelf, I, I need to upgrade it. I will do that once I remember my pin for the SIM. And um, we'll talk about upgrading in another video, but um, please do that as well. Always keep your router up to date with the latest version. Here on the left side, we have uh, Wi-Fi settings. So first we have 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz uh, SSIDs, these are uh, the network names. You can, you can keep them the same, set it home and both, then your devices will just see one network called home and you will not have to worry about which SSID is the two and which is the five gigahertz. And if you want, you can, you can have them separate like that. Uh, frequency, I suggest leaving it at automatic and the device will just uh, quickly scan and see which frequencies are more busy than others and it will select the least occupied frequency. But this scan will only happen uh, once at the time when you're setting it up. So if something, if situation changes and all your neighbors are uh, changing their routers, then you might have to rescan it uh, and set up some different frequency in the future. The frequency uh, band is, there's all kinds of legacy bands here. I suggest you leave it at defaults. Um, this, speci this specific device supports um, the N and AC standards. We have other devices coming out soon that will have more and uh, different bands. Uh, country, I suggest uh, setting it uh, to the country where you're actually using the device. This will limit the frequency uh, to what is actually allowed in your country. Especially if it's an outdoor device, uh, use this uh, country setting correctly because you might get into trouble if you start um, using an outdoor device in some kind of illegal frequency. So just uh, set it to your country. Etsy is a European Union, so I can leave it. Um, then we have Wi-Fi password and, uh, well, it's a Wi-Fi password. There's, uh, <laughs> well, it's a Wi-Fi password. Uh, then we can also set up a guest network uh, for any kind of visitors to your house. Uh, call it party time when you have a party and then disable the guest network afterwards. No problem. You don't have to tell your Wi-Fi password to your guests. And then we have a list of uh, devices that are currently connected. This is probably my computer. And uh, you can see the sig signal here. And if you click on a device that is connected, you can copy it to copy this device to access list. Uh, if I copy it to the access list, then I can check use access list and it will uh, allow 
only devices that I have uh, in my access list. So access list controls which devices are actually allowed to connect and not al allowed to connect, even if they do know the password. So you might uh, tell the password to somebody. If he's not in the access list, he will not be able to connect. If your device is in the access list, you can see it here in the first column. Um, a means ACL. Uh, ACL means access list. So it means that my laptop is now in the in the list, and no, nobody else will be able to connect. Uh, so what else do we have? We have actually a drop down here uh, at the top, and in the drop down you can see different kinds of quick set uh, modes or presets. Let's call them. If your if your device has both two and five gigahertz, then you should probably use one of the bands that have the dual in their name. And uh, this is an LTE device, so um, you, if you if you switch to home AP dual, you will lose the LTE settings here. So uh, generally, I, I don't suggest you change the modes because the device usually comes with the best mode for its purpose. Um, if it's an outdoor device like an SXT, you you could switch to CPE mode if it's a client or or to PTP bridge AP or um, if, if you want it to be an access point, if it's a sector uh, uh, SXT, then you can switch it to uh, with AP. And uh, so these modes are mostly for outdoor Wi-Fi devices where uh, you can uh, have different settings and, and operate the device in different ways. But for home uh, units, the, it, there's no need to switch the mode, leave it at uh, the, the standard one. Um, so that's QuickSet. Uh, my top suggestion is if you use QuickSet, stick to QuickSet. Uh, if you later go and start exploring the advanced mode, uh, advanced menus here on the left, once you do that, forget about QuickSet. Don't go back. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.